Can you speak about the connections between Iran and Syria? Well, first of all, people need to understand that Hezbollah does not really exist as an independent organization. This is a creature of Iran. It was established by the Iranians in 1983, uh, and the Iranians continue to give it political direction. They give it weaponry, and they give it approximately $100 million in funding every year. There were uh, an estimated 100 to 200 uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards troops in South Lebanon. Uh, they have been training Hezbollah all along, and the Israelis have intelligence that uh, the Iranian military has actually been with Hezbollah when they have launched the longer range missiles. It's absolutely clear now that Iran gave the operational go-ahead, the operational order for the July 12th operation against Israel, the taking of the Israeli uh, soldiers, the hostages, and also the uh, first rocket attacks against the city of Haifa. Uh, the day before those attacks, uh, Iran's uh, uh, secretary of the Supreme National Security Council, uh, Larry Johnny, and the head of Iranian intelligence flew from Brussels in Europe to Damascus, where they uh, met with Hezbollah leaders and gave that operational order. So we know that Iran is uh, not just pulling the strings behind the scenes, they are actually giving the orders. Syria serves as the conduit for all the weapons that come to Hezbollah from the Iranians, and additionally, they provide uh, Syrian-made rockets. These are fairly large rockets with uh, 40 uh, uh, kilogram uh, warheads and packed with the uh, tiny ball bearings uh, made to kill. Israel has been telling people in South Lebanon through constant radio broadcasts, through leaflets, leaflets dropped from the air, from loudspeakers on army trucks to leave the area. It's a military zone, and they've been assuming that any civilians left are Hezbollah fighters. What do you think of the media statements that those people who are not leaving are too poor to leave, they don't have the ability to leave and to survive in some decent way if they were to actually go into the north of Lebanon? Look, you know, there are always human tragedies, and, and war creates human tragedies. It's, it's made of human tragedies. And I'm sure that there are people who are too poor to leave and have problems getting out. But there are also people who have been uh, kept from leaving, who wanted to leave, that Hezbollah has kept as human shields, as hostages, if you wish, in this current uh, situation. Why else would Hezbollah position its rocket launchers directly next to civilian shelters. Why would Hezbollah be fighting out of mosques and ro launching rockets against Israel out of mosques? They are inviting the Israelis to hit civilian targets uh, on purpose because Hezbollah, not only do they want to kill Israeli civilians, they also want to kill Lebanese civilians and blame it on Israel. What will the multinational force need to do to be effective? Well, I was in Lebanon in the 82 war, and I returned many times afterwards, uh, and I was here in Israel as well. And I can tell you, uh, the Israelis are justifiably wary of any kind of multinational force in Lebanon. Uh, the UNIFIL observers have been completely feckless. They have just watched as Hezbollah shelled northern Israeli settlements uh, and watched as Israel launched counterstrikes. Uh, just two days ago, I was up on the border at Rosh Anikra watching the UNIFIL convoy coming in to resupply. Uh, these people are virtually unarmed. They are not soldiers in the real sense of the world. If there is to be a multinational force in Lebanon, first of all, it must not just be in the south. It must be in all of Lebanon, especially across the Syrian border. Uh, and second, they must have the authorization and the weapons to be able to kill terrorists and to interdict weapons convoys coming in from Syria. I don't think anybody should have any illusions about Hezbollah uh, respecting uh, the United Nations, respecting international agreements, respecting a multinational force. Uh, they have attacked uh, uh, U.S. troops and Italian troops and French troops that were part of a multinational force in 1982 and 83 and 84. Uh, I fully expect that they will do this again. Uh, Israeli military officials uh, uh, tell me that their real fear is the longer-range missiles that have not yet been fired, the Fajr 5 rockets that have come from Iran, which are virtually uh, unguided, but especially the Zelzal missile, which is a much longer-range uh, missile. It can reach Tel Aviv and beyond, and it carries a big warhead, a 400-kilogram warhead. That is four times the size of the uh, warheads that came down on Tel Aviv during the first Gulf War in 1991 from Saddam Hussein. There have been moves over the past two weeks to set up shelters in Tel Aviv and other big cities in the south in the case of this kind of attack. The Zelzal missiles in particular, because they have a ballistic trajectory, they can be intercepted by Israel's Arrow anti-missile system and by the Patriots. And uh, the Israeli Defense Force has positioned Patriots in Haifa to try to intercept those missiles. And uh, 
military officials believe that one reason Iran may not have given the order yet to fire those missiles uh, in quantity against Israel is that they are worried, in fact, that they will be intercepted by Israeli missile defenses.